few uh, from Israel. Obviously, at Tisha B'Av, we are in Israel. We are nearly, nearly finished. I know you guys have got a while. And I just want to say it's amazing what GIFT are doing. A big shout out to Shira and the team, from my Sands, to everyone on the team for putting together such an amazing program to keep people so connected. Because when I think of Tisha B'Av myself, when I think of this day of Tisha B'Av commemorating a temple that was from thousands of years ago, I find it very, 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 very difficult to relate to. And what I want to kind of bring forward today is this idea of, of positive speech. So what, what has this idea of speaking to people in the right way? What is this idea of positive speech got anything to do with the temple that we lost thousands of years ago and all of the terrible events that have occurred uh, since then? And they say, you know, the rabbis say that the, the second temple was destroyed, the most recent one, because of Sinas Kenam, baseless hatred, right? And a lot of that baseless hatred came into the, came as it manifested through speech, through people being negative to each other, putting, putting other people down. So today I'm gonna to try and try my best through my own experiences and through research to try and enlighten you guys, to try and help you guys realize how you can use your speech, which is such an important thing, how we can use our speech to, 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 to interact people, to help people in such a positive way. We use speech all day, every day. Some people say I talk too much and I use my speech a bit too much. But we all use our speech for so much throughout a day in all of our interactions, in all of our relationships. But the, the question I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna ask the audience, I don't know if we have time for a question, I don't know, I don't know how we're gonna orchestrate this, but I'd like to hear what the audience has to say. I said, it's easy to be nasty. It's easy to just not care, not to tr make an effort to be positive to other people. So the first thing I want to kind of set a foundation for is why are we, ha why are we having this talk in the first place? Like, why do we need to be nice to other people? So my first question to the audience, I want to hear one or two answers, is why do you think it's important to use positive speech to those around you? So if, someone, if, if one or two people could come forward, that'd be amazing, I don't buy it and it'll be really brave of you, just one or two people, just one or two answers. If some people don't feel comfortable, they can type an answer in the chat. If we could have one or two people come forward and just say why they think it's important to, uh, to use positive language, to, to, to be nice to people. Um, is anyone willing to, to say anything? I don't know if you can see people raise their hand. Abigail, okay. One that took place on Tisha B'Av was that the Moroccan and the 12 spies came back with a negative report about Eretz Israel, the land of Israel. And they said lush and horror about it. And it's important. Another reason why the base, uh, second base of Mikdash was destroyed was because, like you said, of Sinas Khanam. So if we wow. have good speech and we have Havas Khanam and we love each other and we wow. don't speak lush and horror, then it's likely that the third base of Mikdash could be rebuilt. Wow. Who was that? Was that Avigal? Yeah, it was Avigal. Yeah. Well done. That was, that was really, really not really amazing. Yeah, because some people think. You know, why do we need to speak nicely? And part of it is because it's obviously the future redemption of the Jewish people, but because a lot of destruction has come about, or you're saying, Abigail, because of bad speech. So if we do the opposite, naturally you think how to overcome something. Yeah, how, how do you overcome the root cause of something? You look at what the opposite would be. So if the root cause of something negative is, 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 is bad speech and being horrible to other people, the way to overcome that, the way to uproot that is to be positive and to use positive language. Very nice, Avigal. Can we have one more answer, please? Don't be shy, guys. We have one comment in the chat as well. I think someone was just about to say something. To treat others like you'd want to be treated yourself. Very nice. Who is that, sorry? Daniel. Daniel, can you elaborate? What do you, what do you mean treat others like the way you would... I feel like you're saying my talk for me. So what do you mean treat others like how you'd be treat yourself? Can you just explain that a little bit more? Because it was really, you got a really good point there. It's like the golden rule. So like you, wow. if you want to like when when you're about to do something, you kind of have to like ask yourself, is this what I'd want to happen to me? Wow. Very, very beautiful. And, and you, know, you know what? You've actually nicely introduced the talk because the basis of this talk is to treat, you know, the, the fundamentals of Judaism, very, very nice, Daniel, is to treat others the way you'd want to be treated yourself. 
right? And I, I want to talk about that as well a little bit. But like we've had some, re- we've had two really good answers already from Avigail and from Daniel. First of all, that the most of our destruction have, has 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 occurred because of negative speech, and number two, it's important to treat other people the way you'd want to be treated. Would you like Would you like someone to be calling you names? Would you like someone to be putting you down all the time, making you feel negative all the time? Or would you? Or, or are we human beings that love positive um, reinforcement, who love compliments, who loves to be picked up? So this is going to be the base of our talk. Why is it important to use positive speech, and how do we practice? What I always try and do in my talks is to give you guys practical tips, practical tips on how you can be positive to others and how you can build others, right? And for building others, you can actually build yourself. So everyone's heard the, the saying, um, sticks and stones, they break my bones, but words may never hurt me. And I, I've always had a problem. I've always, since a kid, you know, I heard that, and, you know, you go around, you know, like, Oh, you can call each other names, but if you hit each other in school, then that's the problem. The minute you use physical violence, that's the problem. I have a big problem with this because we find that actually it's the opposite. If someone punches you on the arm, okay, you get a bruise and you might be a bit traumatized and it will heal. If someone calls you a, a name or someone says something to you that really hurts your insecurity or really puts you down, a teacher or a pupil or a friend at school, you know, you guys are a lot of you are teenagers in school, right? So you know, if your friends call you names or there's, there's verbal bullying, right, that can stay with you for a very, very long time, right? So this whole idea that we've got that sticks and stones may break your bones, but words may never hurt you, but actually the words are the things that hurt us the most. In Judaism, the, the Hebrew word for deber, for word is deber, and deber also means things. So when you say words, guys, when we say our words, they're actually, they turn into materialistic things, right? When you say something to someone, you don't realize the impact because in our head, it's just a thought that goes into words. But what we don't realize is actually impacting the person in such a negative way that it will hurt them more than the physical action. It will, it will be way worse. So I'm going to, this talk is going to be in three sections. The first section is going to be at how we can be positive, positive to ourselves and that, that in turn will help us with others. How we can be positive in relationships. A lot of people are in relationships with They've got siblings, they've got friends, they've got spouses. How can we use our positive speech to make sure that we have the best friendships and relationships and build others around us? And then the third one, which I think is really important in today's generation, is this idea of positive speech with social media. And I'd love to make it very, very interactive. But I know I've got 35 minutes, so it's going to be a bit of me rambling on for a little bit. Normally, I would do all these activities and things, but just because of time constraints, it's going to be a bit of me talking and, and, and listening, which is also good for communication and, and, and speech as well. So the first, I, the first section I want to talk about is ourselves. I, I've done a lot of life coaching. I do a lot on self-esteem, right? And a lot of people's negative behavior to others, a lot of people's negative speech to other people comes a lot from negative self-esteem themselves. Uh, I think it was Daniel who says, love your neighbor as yourself. But my question to Daniel, obviously, for you to think about is that's all good if someone has good self-esteem. If someone loves themselves and wants people to treat themselves, treat them well, then of course they're going to treat others well. But what if someone doesn't love themselves to begin with? What if someone doesn't think highly of themselves to begin with? Then we've got a problem because if they don't love themselves to begin with, then if they treat others the way they want to be treated, it won't be good. They're going to be rude to, it, to other people. So my first point, my first section I'm going to be talking about is is why we should love ourselves and how loving ourselves will actually help our relationships and actually help build others. So I always used to like, I always used to like the child analogy. It's one of my favorite. If a four or five year old came up to you and made a mistake, they made a mistake on a a drawing or or they, 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 they misbehaved, would you shout at them and tell them how wrong they are and how terrible they are? No, you wouldn't because they're a child, because you realize that they, they need nurturing. You want to tell them, you know what? You did really well, but you could have done this better. You, you know, you always start with the positive. And then it confuses me so much. This really confuses me because we're human beings. We tend to be so hard on ourselves. But if we had a child in front of us, we'd be so kind. It doesn't make sense to me. Surely we should, we should start with being so kind to ourselves. We should build ourselves up. 
And everyone's like, and, and if you want to say to me, oh, I want to be humble, so, so let's be horrible to myself. I want to be humble. And I would like to say this, that we all know that the Torah was given on Mount Sinai. We all know the Torah was given on Mount Sinai. And if we ask the question, why was the Torah given on Mount Sinai compared to other mountains? That's a good question, right? Actually, I'm going to ask this. I'm going to ask this question now. I know I said I wouldn't interact, but I can't help it. I want to hear from you guys. Why was the Torah given on Mount Sinai compared to other mountains? Because it was humble. Pardon? Because it was humble. Who's that, sorry? Chaya. Chaya. So Chaya says a really good answer, and it's the answer I was looking for because a lot of people say it. Is that it was it was it was fairly small and it had nice flowers and it was it was humble it was classed as humble compared to the other mountains. But then I heard a great I had an amazing question. It's gonna blow your mind, guys. You are ready for this idea? Then if you're ready, it's gonna blow your mind. If we're looking, if 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 we want a small mountain because it's humble, why doesn't God just give the Jews the the, the Torah on like a flat piece of land or like a valley? Like, if if the whole idea is to be humble, why not just do it on a flat land or like a, a low valley? Why does it have to be on a mountain? Like, if you really want to be humble, give it to us on a, in a desert or on like a, in a on a field. It's a good question, no? And the answer was, in life, it's not about being flat. We don't want to walk around like we're flat. We want to walk around. We're still a mountain, but we don't have to be the biggest. We have to be. The, we don't have to prove everyone that we're better than them. We still have to be upstanding. So this first idea is that everyone, guys, for you to start being nice to other people. You also have to be nice to yourself. So the whole the whole talk today is about being nice to others. How can we be nice to other people? And through my challenges, everyone's had challenges. We've all had challenges here. And it's so easy to let that life beats us down. Uh, exams, school, social groups, there might, be, there might be arguments between friends and things put you down and make you feel low, and make you feel like you're flat land. But the question, what you have to realize is you're not. You're a human being with a soul. You're a human being with a soul who's got so much potential and you're so special the way you are. And and for you to be able to give to others, you have to realize you have so many talents. And so my question, next question is, how do we build ourselves in order to build others? So my tip would be to you guys, a good way that I've learned in life coaching as well, is one of the techniques, is to try and say three positive things to yourself a day. It could be like, um, well done for waking up on time. It could be really small things, it's nothing big. Well done for cleaning your room. Well, it doesn't have to be massive things. It can be three small things. If every person can try to start with three positive things you can say about yourself, right? Three positive things. So as I've said, the first section was about ourselves, right? The child analogy, this idea of Mount Sinai, not being humble, but being humble, but also being proud of yourself. And thirdly, you know, telling yourself three positive things about yourself a day. Give yourself that fuel. And, and why, like I said, if you treat other people nicely as well, it actually helps fuel you. Sometimes when I'm feeling down and I, I smile at someone on the street, I don't know, probably you've had this before, where you're walking down the street and you give someone a lovely smile, you actually feel so much better yourself. You feel uplifted. So guys, remember, I'm building up a picture of you. What you, what you got to realize of me is that I'm building up a picture for you. So the whole talk is how can we build other people? How can we help other people? So the first thing we start internally, we start with I. We start with a, how can I build me up? How can I work on myself to, in order to build others? And that's how we do it. We, we tell ourselves positive things. We realize we're great. Every one of you I'm talking to you right now, you're all amazing, amazing people. And I mean that from, I, I, I can't help it. I love talking to people. I love big, building people up as well. I always try and do it. I, I'm not saying next, but I, I fail miserably sometimes. But the next section I'm gonna speak about is one of the hardest and I'll tell you why. The next section is, is others. Yeah, and, and I find this very, very difficult even though I try my best. I'm sure everyone, unless you're like Moses or something, finds it really, really difficult to be nice to people all the time through speech. I'm sure my sibling, and, and it's normally the people, what, what Rabbi Menes Friedman says is that, in, he talks about relationships, he says, the more familiar we get with people, the worse our speech becomes to them. And you notice that because people you meet for the first time at a social event, it's so easy to be nice and to compliment them. Or even people at school to some degree, it's easier to be nice to them a lot of the time. But when it comes to our family members, our parents, right, that guard comes down more and more and you become so familiar with them 
and we become complacent. We become complacent with the ones we love the most. And for me, it never made, it's still, I'm a very logical person. And for me, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. How can we be more positive and nicer with our words with a stranger than our parents who bring us up and look after us every single day of the week, month, and is there for us in through thick and thin? And for me, I've had this problem. And when Rabbi said that it's because we're so familiar. When you become familiar with something, your guard goes down and you, you know they're going to be there for you. So it doesn't matter how you're going to treat them. So what I want to try and do in this section is to, is to show you the importance of making your, your relationships, spouses, friends, family, fresh and constantly appreciating who they are in order to give them positive reinforcement and to use positive language as much as possible. You guys made the conscious effort to be as positive in your language as possible in your relationships. You, wouldn't, you, would, you would be amazed, you'd be absolutely amazed at the results in your relationship. You know, life coaching, you know, a lot of the life coaching, a lot of the, the youth work that I've done, a lot of the last six, seven years, I've realized that it's all to do with the speech. It's all to do with how you communicate. Every problem that comes out is to do with communication. Every relationship, every time you build a report with people, it's all to do with the way you speak. So if you can master this language, this idea of positive speech through all of your interactions, it's a high level, but as many relationships as possible, who knows? Who knows how your life can change? It can go from a, it can go from a life of confrontation to a life of collaboration, right? We spend so much time, you know, trying to, our ego, trying to be the ones that win. Someone told me an amazing idea the other day. And she said, the more you lose an argument in relationships, the more you actually win. And it was a very, very nice idea because in life, sometimes we're, all we're thinking about is winning, is winning the argument, being the last one to speak or coming out on top. But what you realize is actually causing so much damage because you trying to push the other down and trying to win makes them feel small. And if you lose the argument, so you lost the argument, but at least you've remained your, your, the dignity of the other person has remained. And there's, and there's some sort of shalom between you guys. So what's worth more? You coming out on top and, and feeling like you've won something or shalom between you two? So this is the, this is the section on, on how to treat others. You just got to remember, as we talk about others, is that if, there's one axiom, there's one underlying the, the common denominator that I want to speak about, is that everyone has a soul. Every person has a soul within them. We all have a body, a physical body, yeah, that we look at, we see everyone's looks. But what you got to realize is that behind everything and every person, there's a spark of holiness. There's a spark of godliness in them, which is omnibenevolent, which is only good. And this is a hard thing to this is a hard thing to implement because when you see when you see people you see the physical body you see their external but when you what happens if you put on your god glasses or your or your spiritual glasses and you started to see people not as this angry person or this this, this annoying person but as a soul that has a body and sometimes they do things that I don't like but really they're really really good deep down Obviously, there's lines, there's people that go beyond those lines, like murderers, etc. We're not talking about this, we're talking about an average person, that person who annoys you in school, that person who you're jealous of. All of these people, they all have souls, like you, they all have souls. The Labavitch Rebbe says a beautiful idea about Purim. I'm sure you all love Purim here, it's a great festival. And he says that when you see all of these people with costumes on, or I don't know, I didn't really dress up last year, I was a bit boring, but but people dress up and then they have all these costumes on, right? When you look at these people, you laugh. You look at, when you look at all these people with costumes on, you laugh. You laugh at their costumes. You don't take them seriously. You don't say that that's the essence of the person. You say that's their costume. And the Obama Trevor said something really beautiful. So too with people. When they say, call you names or they make you frustrated or they're annoying towards you, all of these people around you, your classmates, your colleagues, whoever they are around you, whenever they call you names or they say things, right? That's not that. That's their costume. That's a costume to their soul. They're, deep down, they want to be good. Deep down, they love you. Deep down, they, they want to do goodness. But, but that's their body, their, their, their costume is the one that's speaking. So sometimes when someone's shouting at you or someone's being rude to you, there's an idea that you should, that being calm in that situation and letting things go. 
So it's because if someone shouts at you and you start shouting at them, there's fire over fire and it's only going to get worse. Everyone knows this. The minute someone shouts at you and you shout at them and you shout, they shout back, you know, it just gets worse and worse and worse. If someone calls you a name, if you just do what the other person do, does and you, it builds up and it gets worse. You know, when I work with youth a lot, you know, a lot of kids, a lot of young people, teenagers, they have, pro- they, they have, they have problems with each other, you know, about different things, about, you know, one feels left out this, one's bullying this, one's bullying that. And I've, I've dealt with so many, I'm like, so I get them two together. I get two people, say two teenagers have had a problem with each other. They're, they're fighting. One calls each other a name. They're arguing. They're not friends anymore. I get them two together. I say, tell each other one by one your story. Tell them your narrative. Tell them each person, tell them how you saw the situation, exactly how you felt. Tell, tell each person, I want you both to understand the other person. I want you both to see the soul in each other. I want you to realize that the deeper side of them. I want you to realize that this wasn't all just because I'm a, I'm a horrible person, because I saw it one way and I saw it another. So guys, what I'm telling you is, when you're in a situation, in your, any relationship, it could be a friend, it could be a family member. Any time you feel like reacting, I, I love this. This is what I love this topic because it's so important. Every time you feel like reacting in a negative way, any time you feel like going above them and, and saying something you're good, that's good, you're gonna regret. Just remember, number one, that they have a narrative. They see it from their eyes, and they might see it very differently to you, just because that's the way they've been brought up. That's the way they see things. But number two, that they have a soul. And you wouldn't want to do anything or say anything to hurt that soul. If people knew, if people do this and implemented this in their marriage, in their friendships, in any relationship, do you know how many friendships would be saved? Do you know how many breakups or, or, or arguments could have been avo- avo- avoided? There's a nice idea. I don't know if I use it. I like to use an analogy of, of a poker game. I know you guys are very young. I'm not advocating playing poker, all right? So I don't want anyone to call, I don't want to get called cool later or message saying, Jody, she spoke about poker and his talk and it, it, to teenagers. It's just an analogy, please. Everyone <laughs> calm down. <laughs> but I, if you don't know how to play poker, it's fine. It's just, these are, it, I'm just going to use this analogy for life. So I heard an amazing idea once about building other people through positive speech and using the analogy of a game of poker. So basically, in a game of poker, every person has chips. Every person has these chips. And the more chips you have, the better you chances you have of playing the game because you have more chips to play with in the game. You have more chances to actually use your chips. So every person has a certain amount of chips. If you have, someone has more chips than others, it's got more of a chance of winning, right? And what they compare this is to is that every person has a certain amount of chips. Every person has a certain amount of internal chips, confidence, self-esteem, love. And the poker game is called life. Life, going to school, everything, the, the poker game is compared to life. So the kid who goes to school and gets bullied, gets called names, gets picked last in the football team. He's losing 100 chips, 200 chips, 500 chips a day. By the end of the week, by the end of the month, he's got no, he's got, he's got no poker chips to play the game of life. His confidence is trampled. He's got, no, he's got no poker chips to play poker because all, these, all people are telling him is, is horrible names. People are calling him horrible names. People are putting him down. So he's got no poker chips to play this whole game of life. But then you have the kids who come to school and the teacher says, well done, you did amazing today. Your friends are telling you all these positive things, how amazing a friend you are, how positive you are to be around. I love being around you. You have all of these positive, he's getting a thousand chips, 2000 chips, 3000 chips. And then when he goes to his job, he's, a, he's happy to go to interviews because he's got so many poker chips and he's happy to go up for that job promotion because he's so happy. He's happy to go to head boy, deputy head boy, deputy head girl. He's happy to go to all four these positions because they've got so many poker chips. But the question is guys, are you going to be taking poker chips from people or are you going to be giving them to people? And I'm sorry I'm being hard here, but you all, you all need to sit down and really think. When, you, when you're interacting in your conversations, in your life, are you giving people poker chips? Are you giving them, to, are you giving people poker chips or are you taking away people's poker chips? Every conversation you have, every interaction you have, is really about trying, if you go into every conversation and said, how can I uplift this person? How can I give them more poker chips to go through life. How can I? 
just another another quick analogy. It's it, it, it's quite childish. So for all the adults out there, go into child mode. So there was a there was a mouse, and he and he was looking. At, if you're scared of mouses, close your ears. And he's looking through, and he was looking through the crack of the house, and he saw that the family brought this present, and in the present was a mouse trap. So the mouse got really scared. It got really scared, and it went it went outside the local chicken. And he said to the chicken, there's a mouse trap in the house. There's a mouse trap. They're going to kill me. Like, help me. And the chicken said, sorry, it's not doing me. I can't help you. So then he went to the, he went to the, okay, this is not a kosher animal, guys. Don't worry. I'm not advocating eating this animal. And then he went to, he went to a pig and he said to the pig, like, the, the mouse, there's a mouse trap. It's going to kill me. Like, what do I do? And the pig said, sorry, it doesn't, it doesn't actually involve me. Like, I'm not, it doesn't affect me. But I'll pray for you. Don't worry, be my praise. I'll govern. I'll govern and show, you know what I mean, on, on Shabbat. Then he went to the cow. He went to the cow at the end. He said, the cow is a mouse trap. They're going to kill me. Like, help me. And the cow said, sorry, it's not got nothing to do with me. Like, it's a mouse trap. You, you deal with it. It was the middle of the night. And the mouse saw that the trap was used. And, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the mom of the house was screaming. What had happened was... It was a snake, a snake, there was a poisonous snake. It'd been eaten by the trap and it, and it was just its tail. And the wife got bitten by the snake. And the wife got really ill. So the, the dad brought home the wife and said, you need some chicken soup, like, you know, just to make you feel better. So the chicken who didn't want to help, you know, got used as the chicken soup. Then they got really, really hungry. They need, they need to feed everyone. So the chick, so the the pig, they used the pig to make to have some food, and it still wasn't enough. People were still around trying to support, and they used the cow for the rest of the meat. And I guess the moral of the story is, guys, that you might think <laughs> that everyone else's problems have got nothing to do with you. You might think when someone comes for you and they need help, or even if someone's upset and they're angry towards you, it might not be you. First of all. But you might think that other people's problems got nothing to do with you. Same way the chicken, the, they, they thought that the, the mousetrap's got nothing to do with me. And in the end, they were the ones that were affected. Guys, the Jewish people, the whole world, the whole Tisha B'Av is, about, is, is telling us not to be selfish. We're trying to think about redemption of, of the whole Jewish people. Like the whole Tisha B'Av is about not being selfish. If you think about it on a deep level, it's not about I. In the Amida, if you look at the prayers in the Amida, they're not about I, they're all about us and we, they're all in plural. Judaism's, uh, the whole point of life, guys, the whole point of life is about taking ourselves out of the I, taking ourselves out of selfishness. Even from being married, you learn, that's what they teach you in all these, in these classes, is about, it's not about you, it's not about I. Although this sounds paradoxical, because I did say to you that you need to work on yourself, that you still do. But the, the Ica, the main point of life is not about I. And that everyone affects everyone. We're all in this together. So what does this mean for positive speech? When someone comes to you guys, try your best, even if they seem good, to uplift every single person you meet. It could be one comment. He said, I like your smile. I like the way you did this. Thank you for approaching me. Thank you for being one. You don't know. You give them some poker chips. But don't, when someone comes to you with a problem, even if it's, like, if it's something you can't solve, and it's like, signpost them, tell them to go here, to do that. But if people come to you and they need help and you feel like you could genuinely listen, even if you listen for 20 minutes, if you just by listening, you can help them. From, from life coaching, I've got a life coaching qualification. And the whole thing basically teaches you that you have two ears and you have one mouth. And the main, the main point of a life coach is to sit and to listen to the other person, ask them questions. So when someone comes to you with a problem, guys, it's not about you solving their problems and giving them advice. That doesn't, that isn't, the, 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 sometimes that helps, but that's not the key. I know you might think your friends come to you with a problem and you feel pressure automatically that you need to help them, you need to provide solutions. But what I'm saying to you from life coaching qualification and from working with lots of kids a long time, it's not about providing solutions. It's not about solving their problems. It's about just being a listening ear. You know, we, we, this whole talks have been about speech and how you can help with speech. But sometimes just through not using your mouth and using both your ears to really listen to someone who's got a problem or someone who needs help, just by listening to them, that can do a lot of the healing process. Because what happens a lot, guys, is when people talk about their problems to you, 
they actually come up with the solutions themselves. That's the whole point of life coaching, that everyone has the answers themselves, sometimes just through asking them questions. So if they talk about, you know, something that happened at school, so tell me more about that. How did you feel? What do you think you could do? What do you think you could do next to make it better? You can provide through questioning and through listening a lot of the a lot of the healing process. So my point, guys, is we're all in this together, and the other people are part of us, and they all have souls. So we have it's important for us to listen, to use our two ears and one mouth to really, really help others. So let, let's just let's just think about where we're holding now. Firstly, we've built the foundation. We built the complete foundation of I need to love myself. I should tell myself positive comments every single day just to help build that foundation. There's a mountain here, there's a, there's a pyramid. We have to build our own foundation. We have to build ourselves as well in order to give to others. Then we spoke about this idea of poker chips, giving people as many poker chips, giving people as much help as possible to help them survive in the game of life. And that we're all in this together. We're not the, we don't want to be the pig, the cow. We want to be someone who who actually loves other people and realizes that other people's problems are also part of ours and also we can help them. But also having that balance where you don't take on everyone. And three, how do we do that? We do that through listening, through really taking time to listen to people. And I, get, I wanna give you a practical tip. Try in every conversation, or at least try at least two or three times a day in your conversations with people, Try and force yourself, and I just, it's gonna feel really hard at first. Try and force yourself to say something positive to someone. And you'll see, just watch, just watch, just watch how the other person reacts. And it doesn't have to be compliments like you're amazing, Jay General, make it very specific. I like the way you did A, B, and C. I like the way you said that thing. I like the way you organized that. I like the if you say it very specific to the actions, it makes them feel like I did something. And this specifically really works in relationships to people around you, spouse, friends. You might think they don't need it because you're so familiar with them, but you don't realize by you telling them, saying thank you for cleaning this, thank you for cleaning that, try your best to constantly be positive, constantly give positive reinforcement. And you will see, come back, try this guys for a week or two and like email me the difference you'll see in your, in your relationships. And, and guys, this isn't conditional, meaning people are like, oh, I'm only going to be nice to them if they're nice to me. No, that's not how it works. You are only in control of, your, of what you do. You can't, you can, there's a rule, you can't control what anyone else does. And the more you try and control someone else, the more you realize you don't have control. So the key isn't to control everyone else and to make everyone else do something else. The key is to change how I affect, how I react. And that will change the that will naturally change the other person. So how do you do that? If someone's rude to you, if someone is rude to you, you still be kind, you still be calm, you still say positive things. If you're really angry, what my rabbi would say, if, if you ever feel angry, leave the room. Go choke outside. If you're gonna say something you're gonna regret, leave the room. Do don't try your best to never use harmful language to someone, even because in the moment you'll always regret it. Always try to have a positive effect on other people. And that is how, that is how we're going to build the base of me. How, that's how we're going to build the base of me. That's how are we going to help the world. It all starts with speech. It all starts with the way you talk to others. And the last section I want to talk about quickly before we end is this idea of social media. With the advancements in te technology, it's so easy to ignore all of these things I've spoken about. And the minute we get behind a screen, the minute there's a barrier there, the minute you can be someone that you're not, the minute there's that extra layer of protection, the minute we see that, we somehow are, are deceived to believe that we can say whatever we want to people. You know, we were all watching the England game, I'm sure. And we were, uh, very into the get into the it coming home you know everyone's singing that coming home song you know it's very very big in england not so much in israel i went to watch the game and, and and after i was really really shocked i'm sure everyone was shocked of what they saw on social media well number one as a as a as a black individual from england it was actually quite scary um but to see what people were saying on social media about people because they missed the penalty of a football game obviously a big football game but to 
how rude and how disgusting people are, were on social media. I actually read a statistic that 70% of people in America, 70% of people in America on a daily basis feel offended of what they see on social media at least once a day. That's a huge proportion of people. 70% feel offended to what they see on social media. And guys, I'm not saying social media isn't good. I'm using it now. Social media is an amazing, amazing, amazing tool. But what I'm saying is we have to really, really think, especially at a teenager, when I was a teenager, the amount of things that I saw or I heard of people in my year, of like how they were bullied on social media and how things were being said, how horrible things, what such horrible things were being done on social media because the minute the kids or the teenagers got behind a screen, they somehow felt invincible. And this is not okay. It's not okay the minute we get behind the screen to think we can now put other people down because we're behind the screen and we're not interacting. These lessons that I've spoken about, all they apply even more so to social media because it's so much, so much easier to be horrible over social media. So we need to make an extra effort to be nice, to say a positive comment, to reach out to that friend, use it, reach out to that friend who you haven't spoken to, that friend who's going through a half time, call them. There's so many th things that I see on social media that are just horrible, uh, cancel culture, putting people down. So guys, as a teenager as well, social media is such a big thing for you guys. I know a lot of you use Snapchat, all of these different social media platforms. But the key is to use these social media to make start projects, compliment people, help others, do talks, do inspirational talks, help others. So guys, the message is, right? I want to kind of conclude. I want, I've spoken about quite a lot today, <laughs> quite a lot of different ideas. And I want to kind of... Um, bring everything together in the last few minutes. And I want to kind of just go over what I've said and reiterate things, right? This is a terrible day for the Jewish people. And it can be very, very hard to connect to because it happened such a long time ago. But so many things have happened since the Holocaust, the Spanish, the Spanish Inquisition, you know, even just all of these wars that are going on in Israel. And there's so much that are happening to the Jewish people. And it's so easy to get complacent. Okay, it's not affecting me. I'm in my nice house in Gold's Green, Edgware, in Israel, you know, living my life, you know, going to yeshiva, like studying university. I'm fine. You like it's so easy to get into that position of I'm I'm, I'm not responsible for anything. I'm I'm going along okay, so that's fine. But we need to get out of this zone of I. We need to get out of this zone of I. Like we need to we need to remove ourselves from this zone of I, 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 I. And we need to think about we and we need to think about the us. There's so much more to, to life than just I, right? Why, why, why is there such a big idea in Judaism for someone to get married? Because we're, we're not I. The I is not the reason we're here to live. The, the, we're here for the we. So on that basis, what does that mean, the we? When the temple was destroyed, it was based on basis hatred, hatred of the, of the nation. So how do we love the nation? And what do we need to do? And my, my focus today has been and one of many focuses we can do to help others is this idea of speech. The idea of positive speech. And I broke it down into three sections. The self, others, and the use of social media. When I said when I spoke about the self, I spoke that we, you know, that we have to have love ourselves before we love others. You know, the idea of, of the child analogy of like treating ourselves as if we treat a child. And that, you know, if you say three positive things to yourself a day, you can you can really build yourself whilst building others. Second section, I spoke about the idea of other people having a soul. And even those people closest to us, I suppose that's sometimes who we treat the worst. And I'm saying, look at your relationship. Look at those people around you. And even if you feel like they're in a, in a really bad place, your friendships, your relationships, and even if you feel like you're in a bad place, this is the perfect day to change it. This is the perfect day to work on those things. Be nicer to your husband and wife. Be nicer to your friends at school. Be nicer to your siblings. Love them. Be nice to them. Give them po poker chips. And when people come to you, don't be like the mouse, the pig. Be someone who's going to help them with their issues. Be, be a someone who's, who's a giver. The whole reason we were created was to give, to give love, to give and to build others, to build other self-esteem, to build, to build the foundation of other people, to help become, people become amazing, amazing people. And then lastly, this idea of social media, right? taking that all together and how can we use the social media which has a vast network of people how can we use that to build others and not 
to act as a barrier for us to be rude to other people, for us to put other people down, but for us to use our language, even on social media, using technology to build others, to build projects, to make a good difference in the world. If we want to really build the base of Migdash, if we really want to build it, we have to start looking at building others. If we want to build a base of Migdash, we have to build others. And the easiest way, the most practical way right now for you guys to build others, you can do charity, you know, gift gives you hundreds and hundreds of millions of opportunities to do giving and to do volunteering. And that's amazing. But what you can do on a, on a second to second basis, which doesn't cost anything, doesn't really cost time because you'd be doing it anyway, is speech. Using your speech to uplift others. And it's, and it's very, very easy. It, get, it gets easier. It's just saying positive things. Just be nice to people. People appreciate it. Be friendly. And I'll, I mean, we've got four minutes left. Um, but I just want to say, like, that's, re- that's something I'm really, really passionate about. And it's something I really, like, hold up the flag. Like, I really want to make a thing. Like, be positive to people. Always, every time you have a conversation with someone, try and leave with something positive. Try and give them something positive. Every time you work with someone, just try and be not- Try your best to be nice at all times. And you'll see such a difference in your life. You'll see that confrontation doesn't come to you so often. Like, all of these things, that they don't come to you so often. Because if you give off positive energy and you're always nice to people, it's really hard for people to be horrible to you if you were nice to them so much. You know, obviously there's still an idea of you being assertive and still having your personality. That doesn't mean being horrible. That means you can be nice and you can be assertive in a nice way. So guys, thank you so much for having me. And I really appreciate, you know, to come, to go, to come back again and to speak again and, 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 you know, have good chats and help others and you can help me. And thank you so much, Shira and like Rabbi Sands and the, the whole gift team for having me. You guys are amazing, and I love doing stuff for you guys. We love you doing stuff for us. <laughs> Thank you so much. We hope that everyone has taken some inspiration away from what Jodice said, because I really that was unbelievable. I think everyone needs to hear that. Really, really do. Thank you so much. Huh. I'm going to share screen now to show you all um, the rest of the program for the day, just so that you can all see. Um, in two minutes, we are starting with Rabbi Sands Millen. He's going to be speaking about um, reflections from his father's bedside. He, his father's been unwell for the past, um, how long has it been, Rabbi? Three months. Three months. And Rabbi Sands sat next to him. And even though they weren't saying any words, there was so much that he gained from the experience. And so he's going to talk about that experience. And then we've got 715, Shani Solomon, who is a therapist. And she's going to be talking about how to actually change when you feel dislike or hatred towards someone, how to change your view and how to change your perspective and, to, and turn it into love. Then at eight o'clock, we've got the keynote speaker, which is Mo Manik, who's speaking from Israel. He um, had a debilitating stutter for most of his life, and he's going to talk about his journey. Now he's an international speaker and author, and he's a motivational speaker. He's excellent. And he's going to talk about his journey to and the gift. And then nine o'clock is Rabbi Schiff, who's going to talk about giving in the Holocaust and showing a video with some survivors talking about some examples of when they actually someone gave to them or they gave to someone else and how powerful it was in such a dark time. Um, so a great thing. And Joe see that was amazing. We really, really thank you so much for speaking to us. Um, and Rabbi Millen is going to start in one minute. So if you My pleasure. Know. Enjoy Rabbi Sands. Love you. Joe I'm not sure I can say anything that's worth anything what you just said. I love you Rabbi Sands. Love you. Love you too, bye. Beautiful. Thank you so much for speaking like that.